On June 19th, 2016, Stephen Curry had the opportunity to make the biggest stop of his entire career. We've all seen it before. Irving and Curry, one-on-one, -on -one. Irving puts it up! Pause it. At precisely this moment, Curry knows he isn't going to get a piece of the ball, and this NBA championship falls in the hands of Kyrie's shooting ability. But what if Curry was taller? Tall enough to get a hand on the ball and disrupt the shot. I mean, even at 6'3", he's mere inches away from the ball and mere seconds away from changing the entire trajectory of his career. What if Stephen Curry was seven feet tall? Would we have a new seven foot basketball demigod, capable of shooting the ball better than anyone on the planet, but now with the length to go up and over whoever he wants? A seven foot machine who can still handle the rock like a point guard, but can crash the boards and disrupt offenses too. Well, actually, this player already exists, and his name is Kevin Durant. And even as a seven foot Stephen Curry, he's one of the greatest players of all time, but not the greatest. In fact, some fans would have Steph ranked higher all time than KD. Similar skill sets, and yet the guy who is eight inches shorter somehow has achieved similar levels of greatness, if not more. See, in an interview, Kevin Durant was asked, with your game, what's the shortest you could be and still make an all-star team? KD's honest answer was 6'7". Kevin Durant, one of the most skilled players on the planet, believes that without his freakish height and length, he'd be just another NBA player. But I don't know if I agree with KD. A few weeks ago, I did a video on the greatest pound for pound player in NBA history. We use numbers and math. It was a great time. But in the comments of that video, I continued to see the same phrase again and again. If insert short player here was taller, he'd be the GOAT. And although I understand why someone would say this, I think it's time to throw away this idea altogether. The concept of just giving a player an extra six inches in height and expecting that their game would increase at a precisely correlated rate. Size grants a massive advantage in basketball most of the time, but not all the time. I mean, think about it. There has to be some significant advantage to not being an absolute giant. Otherwise, the average height of an NBA player would be 6'10 and not 6'6. There is use in relatively shorter players, not because being shorter is inherently advantageous on a basketball court, but because shorter players have a skill set that bigger players just don't possess. And virtually the only way to obtain a player that has these specific skill sets is to seek out shorter guys to get the job done. Here's a list of the last 20 league MVP winners. Now, do you notice the trend going on here? Yeah, me neither. The best players in the league come in all different heights, positions, and skill sets. Big guys aren't any better just because they're bigger, and by no means have a clear advantage because of their size. In fact, before Giannis won the award last season, the last big man to take home the MVP was over a decade ago. Because like we've discussed, height is not inherently advantageous. Now for us average guys, six inches could change our entire game. But us average guys are nowhere near our full athletic potential. We have not exhausted every resource and manipulated every variable to get the most out of our abilities. So in our case, height might allow us to explore areas of the game we once couldn't. But for the very best players on the planet, room for overall growth is limited. NBA players have ran the gambit of improvement techniques, drills, and training to reach peak playing ability. They have already hit their ceiling or at the least are getting extremely close. What exactly is six inches going to change? Is Stephen Curry any better of a player if he's seven feet and can grab three more rebounds a game? Or is Stephen Curry a completely different player because he's down low grabbing rebounds instead of being the revolutionizing three point shooter that he is? This trade-off dilemma has been explored in a principle called Ziff's Law, a law that explains what scientists call a deterministic description of human behavior. In its simplest form, Ziff's Law states that each individual will adopt a course of action that will involve the expenditure of the least average of his work. In other words, humans tend to travel the path of least or most efficient effort. A basketball player blessed in stature will not seek out the same extreme methods and techniques as a 5'10 basketball player because, simply, he doesn't have to. 
he already has the physical tools to get him just far enough. You see this principle of human behavior on display all the time in the NBA's biggest, most physically gifted players. Do big guys have a tough time shooting the ball because they're too big? Or because they never took the time to hone in on that part of their game because they were too busy getting easy buckets down low? Shaquille O'Neal is a perfect example of this. All of the tools to be the best player to ever touch the court, but even he will say he lacked the discipline to continue to improve his game because there simply was no reason to. He was already the best on just physical dominance alone. On the other hand, a relatively small basketball player will seek out every single advantage he can get because unfortunately he needs all the help he can get. A 7 foot Stephen Curry probably never learns how to shoot that sweet 3 pointer because he never had to learn it. A 6 5 Allen Iverson doesn't have that deadly crossover in his arsenal because he never had to get that deep into his bag to accomplish what he wanted to on the court. And even if you pose the idea of just giving these stars extra inches once they are already established in the league, I truly doubt that a 7 foot Stephen Curry plays much different than a 6 3 Stephen Curry does. And I highly doubt that a 6'5 Allen Iverson changes a whole lot from his game that worked so marvelously well for a 5'10 Allen Iverson. Years ago, in an interview, Kobe Bryant spoke about Allen Iverson and his greatness, saying, We should all be fortunate Allen Iverson wasn't 6'5, which puts into perspective just how dominant AI was. He was listed at 6 feet, but he was more like 5'10 one of the shortest players in the NBA, and yet he could go blow for blow with the best players of his era. If Allen Iverson was 6'5", he would not be Allen Iverson. AI's diminutive stature is what made him so special. Only a guy seven inches shorter than his peers could find so many creative ways to get past them. Only a 5'10 shooting guard would try the stuff AI was doing. See, if Allen Iverson was 6'5", he might not have practiced that signature crossover day after day to perfect the move because he would now have the stature to get into some other moves that suit his game better. Maybe if he was 6'5", he would have never approached the game with such a vicious dog mentality. Because being 5'10", will teach you things that being 6'5", won't. Shorter players develop skill sets that end up shaping the rest of their careers. Being taller would only change their initial skill set, making them a completely different player. Or at the least, being taller wouldn't even change their existing skill set. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. If Stephen Curry was 7 feet tall, would he not just continue to be Stephen Curry? Do Stephen Curry things? Play the game the exact same way, just with an extra 9 inches of height? It's not like his game would suddenly morph into Giannis because he's taller. He's not going to attack the basket every play, or crash the boards like Giannis, or Euro step 15 feet like him. He would, quite literally, just be Stephen Curry, only taller. Small athletes tend to have a chip on their shoulder, a variable in their personality archetype to compensate for the lack of size. Maybe if the little guy was big, he doesn't work as hard. He doesn't go the extra mile in the end, because if he was big, he wouldn't need to. I've often found this to be the case with athletes who are bigger and stronger early in their youth. They rely far too heavily on their natural tools and never truly expand on their skill set until it's too late. And unfortunately, oftentimes coaches do the same. Coaches always put the big kid down low under the hoop and the small kid at the top to run the point. And it's only natural since generally speaking smaller players tend to display more coordination and quickness than bigger players and the big kids can grab boards and go over their opponent more effectively than the little guys. And these little guys that defied all odds by making it to the league with their world class skill set never develop that exact skill set because this time around they're big enough to get stuff down low to grab rebounds and set picks. People wonder why Kevin Durant has lied about his height for years. Well, KD said he did this so he would not be classified as a big, which allowed him to stay on the perimeter and develop into the player he is today. You see, there's a reason why little guys have the physical abilities they do and same with the big guys. This is just as much a matter of nature as it is nurture. Maybe if Stephen Curry was 7 feet tall, he would never have learned that picture perfect jump shot. Or maybe he wouldn't have the tools to learn it even if he wanted to. Last year I made a video discussing the strikingly odd correlation between a player's weight and their shooting ability in basketball. 
Yeah, as crazy as this sounds, weight is strongly correlated to a player's ability to shoot the ball accurately. In fact, a study by the Helinski Research Institute for Sports and Exercise Medicine found that on average, a 14% increase in stature results in a 22% increase in reaction time. This means that a 7 foot tall man has on average a 33% increase in reaction time in comparison to an average size man. Size isn't necessarily free, it comes at a cost. So with that being said, the idea of a player being the GOAT only if they were taller doesn't make much sense at all. So ask yourself, was there any defense that Allen Iverson couldn't manipulate? Was there any shot Allen Iverson couldn't get off at 5'10"? So if AI could already do whatever he wanted to with the ball in his hands, what is giving him seven extra inches of height going to change? Like I said earlier, giving a player more size does not equate to a linear increase in ability. Maybe he's a bit more effective on defense. Maybe he gets a few better looks throughout the game. But as a whole, I don't think Isaiah Thomas is considerably better if he's 6'2 instead of 5'9. I don't think Steve Nash is any more dominant if he has, let's say, LeBron's stature. But let's say that you do think that giving an NBA player more inches would equate to more success on the court. Well, if this applies to little guys like Curry and Iverson, wouldn't this apply to bigger players as well? If a 6'5 Allen Iverson would have been the greatest player of all time, would a 7 foot Michael Jordan not take the crown right back? What if Stephen Curry was 7 feet tall? Well, honestly, nothing would change. Everything would remain the same, except the best shooter on the planet would be a 7 footer instead of 6'3". Hope you guys enjoyed, be sure to subscribe if you have not already, and as always, until next time.